Hi, welcome to the small shed. This week I'm doing some work on a hand plane. See you in a minute. Now as I've started doing more and more what I would call proper woodworking, I've started to use hand tools more and started to get into the sharpening thereof. Amongst all the stuff I've got are a couple of planes. I've got about four or five that I've inherited over the years. This is a little number three which I think is rather nice dinky little plane but it's sadly seen far better days in terms of rust than that so I'm not going to do a restoration video as such because there's an awful lot of those about a lot of people doing them and I'm not really um, anything more at the moment than somebody who's trying to learn how to do it so I'm not the best person to be doing a tutorial on it just going to take it apart though have a look at it see what state it's in it looks to me to be quite nice but I think it's just been left <clears throat> so I'm just going to clean it up wherever possible there's very little to it the black doesn't need repainting I don't think I think it'll probably just brush clean um, but I just want to get it up and running because I'm starting to use bits like this a lot more however the only thing about this that I don't like <laughs> is the plastic handles a plastic handle there for the knob the front plastic handle and I know from when I made the push stick that I made some time ago uh, out of oak I quite enjoyed making that I'm guessing yeah that a little bit of hard work with this and maybe a spot of oil at some point further down the line will get me back to a nice finish so i'm just going to have a go with this carry on with this for a bit now and come back when i'm getting ready to do the wooden bits that uh, are there the actual plane blade itself i'll just use the um sharpening setup that i did some time back right that's got it working vaguely as a plane all i need to do now is get these handles off it and make something that looks a little bit more like a wooden handle than a plastic one right i've found a couple of bits of pretty dense I presume it's a mahogany sort of maranti utility sort of type wood but that's pretty dense which is what I want because I don't want the thing splitting the knob is 41 mil and that is 45 so piece off that and the handle at its widest is 23 nearly 24 and that piece is 25 so that's ideal it's on a window board or something now I knew that the grain direction would be important in this handle but I wasn't quite sure what I should be doing with it. Um, I'd got several thoughts of my own but I thought I'd actually check by going to the guys on the Woodworking UK 
Facebook group who were, as usual, very helpful. A, a lot of the forums you get on the internet, you ask a question and you get half a dozen different answers from people, each of whom are totally assured that their answer is correct and yet they're all diametrically opposed to one another so it's a job to know what the answer is. I got a straight answer back by two or three people, all the same, very helpful, brilliant group. What I'd thought was that either it would need to be top to bottom the grain running that way because when you screwed up your screw it would be putting in compression and that would be the strongest way but I recognize that that would leave this part being quite fragile because it was wrong that way. I thought it should therefore probably be something like that but again it, I wasn't sure and then I thought it might might be that it should be with the grain vertically down the main part of the handle. Turns out it's none of the above. If you put a rod down the middle where the bolt is going, which is where all the compression is, it's not that way because it's slightly off. It's actually with that line at right angles to the grain, which is logical in that it's it's in compression and it leaves the most strength I think in these parts here. Not only did they give me the answer that I was looking for helpfully within half an hour or so, they also turned me up a reference to Lee Valley instructions on how to make one and a template. So really all the work's been done for me all i need to do is pop that template onto the wood just pop it on with a bit of double-sided tape it's got hole sizes to drill out to get the angles the corners and everything and it's got full instructions on how to cut it out and shape it to suit so once again really helpful Thanks to the guys on Woodworking UK. Right, let's just trial fitted that to make sure it, the heel fixings are all right because there's a little indent there and uh, wanted to make sure the bolt worked okay. What I'm going to do now I think is I'll just tidy the outside profile up with the sander and then go in with a fairly big round over bit and see what that leaves me with and then work on it from there with sandpaper and um, other sanding sort of mechanisms i've got the little finger sander i've got the belt sander i've got the shinto rasp all that sort of thing files to just try and get the right sort of shape
Now one thing I'm discovering about wood turning, I'm, I'm still not doing much but whenever I do do it I'm realising that you've got to think so much further ahead than you do with even normal woodworking. An example there with this knob that I'm making, it needs a hole right through it which is no problem, you get a drill and stick it in the chuck and it'll go through it. It needs it counterboard at that end which is great, you can do the same thing, just put a bigger drill in and go in from that way. However, the other end it also needs a counterbore. Now if I then take that piece off, turn it round, there's very little there that you can get a decent grip on to get it centred up and running smoothly. So effectively what I should have done was while this was still a square piece of timber I should have actually done the counterbores from about here somewhere right the way through to about there on that end I can't do that now because obviously it's too far gone I'm too far into this all I can do at the moment is a bit of a bodge I've got a centre marked on this end I know that because I put them in in the first place um, I will actually have to drill through with a force and a bit and hope that I'm vertical if you see what I mean and by doing it on the bench but it just shows how much further ahead you've got it you've got to almost be thinking about how some of the finishing bits are sorted even before you start turning the timber about 45 mil the beauty of these Forstner bits I got from Trend are that they're designed to be able to curve around so if you do get a little bit offline you can pull them back in 45 mil is about up to there on the shaft let's put a bit of tape on there I think just to give me a rough idea it's just to clear the ferrule on the plane handle on the base I mean so but this all could have been avoided if it was done in the machine to start with Time alone will tell whether that was successful or not. If not, we'll have to make another one. Right, I've sanded both the handles down well, I've actually taken them down to 400, I normally take it down to about 320 um, Just got to put some finish on now, I'm not really quite sure which way to go with these but I think I'll start with the teak oil and see I've got some very old teak oil, I don't know what state it's probably been in there for garage for 20 or 30 years but um, see what happens instantly brings it to uh, some sort of life I'll probably have two or three coats over the next couple of days but yes I think that's infinitely more beautiful than that just leave that a day or two to dry and I'll do the same on the knob as well now on the lathe and then we can part that off and we're pretty much done I think so there we have it the um, handles are replaced I'm happy with that it's not quite true that they're replaced um, I took all of this lot apart 
and I think you can guess what I'm going to say next. Um, I've lost the screw to the front knob. So I've got to sort that out, but that's a minor problem. I know what the thread is anyway, but much, much better than the nasty plastic we had before. Much nicer to the touch, to the feel. I'll keep feeding it teak oil and um, give it a, a minor small wax polish I think afterwards but I'm very happy with that that's uh, got that plane back into working condition well that's the first one down I've got another three or four to do I shan't bore everybody with the uh, doing all the rest of them but it does raise the question of where I'm going to put them when they're all done so I've got to sort out some idea on plane storage in the shed as well at the moment they're in a sustainer right down on the floor so um, probably some sort of rack somewhere will be in order we'll have a go at that next hope to see you next week we'll be doing something different and i look forward to seeing you then bye